Standard pin brazing unit comprises three 12 volt batteries wired in series, creating a 36 volt operating system. Standard batteries are a wet sealed non spill type and require no maintenance other than regular charging and visual inspection to ensure there are no loose cables, visible damage, swelling, or leaks. One positive 9mm female DINS type welding connection for the brazing gun. One negative 9mm male DINS type welding connection for the return or earth device. One XLR connection for charger and grinding machine attachment. Microprocessor controlled battery charger. There are two models available. In-car VPAC and the standard mains Elite unit. Connected via XLR plug to the centre socket on the battery unit. Once attached to a power supply, the red LED will indicate power on. The yellow LED will illuminate to indicate system charging. When at 80% capacity, the yellow LED will intermittently flash. And when at full capacity, the charger will switch to a trickle charge mode indicated by the illumination of the green LED. At this stage, the unit is fully charged and ready for use. It is essential that the unit be left on charge whenever not in use. 42 volt grinding machine has a substantial cable and an XLR bayonet type connector which when plugged into the battery unit will lock into place. This is released by the small button mounted on the socket. The grinder has a collet attachment designed for use with burrs and other surface preparation products with a 6mm diameter shank. It comes with a round tree carbide burr which can be changed simply by using the two open-ended spanners provided. The on-off switch is located on the main body of the grinder. Ensure the switch is in the off-o position before it is plugged into the easy bond. Once activated, the grinder will operate at 26,000 RPM. For optimum stability, grip the grinder with one hand on the main body close to the power switch and the other hand on the black nozzle extension. Always take care to use the flat area of the burr when grinding. Earth device. Supplied with a standard length cable of 1.85 meters, has a magnetic clamp which must only be attached to a clean bright surface by the two protruding blades on one face of the clamp head and never by the top or side. The plug of the earth device must be securely attached to the battery box using its push and twist feature. The earth device requires little maintenance provided it is kept free from moisture and metallic particles which may build up. This will decrease the continuity of the magnetic connection and result in unwanted arcing. If the contact plates become pitted, simply skim the faces with a flat hand file. Brazing gun. All standard brazing guns operate in basically the same way. They consist of a solenoid and a trigger mechanism. When the gun is set and ready for use, Activation of the trigger will energize an electromagnet within the gun body and lift the brazing pin away from the substrate to a set distance. This will be enough to create an arc and initiate the pin brazing process. With the exception of the Easy Bond Reach system, which has a separate trigger requiring a manual reset, once brazing is complete, the standard gun will automatically reset as it's removed. As with the earth device of the gun, which comes with a 2.7 meter cable, it must be securely attached to the battery box using its plugs push and twist feature. Adjustment is achieved by twisting the ferrule holder, brazing is initiated by the depression of the trigger button and on systems requiring fuse pins the fuse section of wire is ejected by depressing the ejector rod button. Simple repairs and maintenance to the gun would include ensuring pin holder and front piece are securely fastened and that the pin and ferrule are a tight fit within the jaws of these holders. If they are flared or misshapen, then they must be removed and evenly adjusted either in a vise or chuck. Contacts are cleaned and tightened or replaced when necessary, utilizing the Allen key and open-ended spanner provided in the toolkit. Contact nipple is replaced whenever any resistance is encountered when trying to eject the fused wire. Never force the button. 
This is achieved by firstly removing the ferrule holder, inserting the Allen key provided through the hole in the front piece and into the securing hole on the center piece. This will lock the solenoid and prevent it from turning freely. The pin holder is then removed along with the spark shield and guide washer. Insert the peg spanner into the contact nipple and turn anti-clockwise to unscrew. Check the condition of the ejector pin to ensure it is not bent or broken. Install a new contact nipple and reassemble the gun. When attempting a braze, safety is essential. Correct PPE must always be worn. This includes goggles for grinding and for anyone located within three meters, minimum shade five spectacles for brazing, flame-proof overalls and gloves. For the process, there are five key factors to remember. One, batteries. Ensure they are fully charged, correctly installed and in good working order. Two, grinding. A bright steel finish is essential for attachment and good contact of the earth device. Three, grinding. A bright steel finish is essential for attachment and good contact of the brazing pin or cable lug. Four, adjustment. The gun is adjusted so that when manually depressed against the substrate or the cable lug in the case of direct brazing, that the adjustment indicator or collar are flush with the flat triangular face at the rear of the gun. Incorrect adjustment will result in an inaccurate arc length and a possible defective braze. 5. Operator. Must be trained and hold the brazing gun very still for the duration of the braze, which should be approximately 2 seconds. Loading the gun and preparation to braze. Grind as required. Attach the earth device securely to the battery box. Attach the brazing gun securely to the battery box. Check the previous fuse has been ejected. Carefully insert a brazing pin which should have a straight fuse wire with the kinked end still intact as this will gain optimum contact with the contact nipple inside the gun. Make sure the fuse wire does not get jammed and push it hard and fully into the pin holder. This must be a very tight fit. If the pin is not a tight fit, then it is possible that the jaws of the pin holder have become flared and will require adjustment. Insert the ferrule with the serrated edges outward. Again, this must be a tight fit. Place the pin tip directly against the substrate inside the cable lug where required and depress the solenoid fully toward the required braze surface. Without moving the depressed gun, check the adjustment indicator or collar, release the solenoid and adjust as necessary by rotating the ferrule holder. Once set up, stand preferably resting against a secure object and squeeze the trigger. This should click and brazing should commence. It is always advisable not to look directly away from the braze operation as you may inadvertently move your positioning. Once the brazing has stopped, approximately two seconds, hold for a further two seconds, then pull the gun straight back from the braze. Don't prize the gun from the pin shank. Remove the ferrule from the gun by prizing it against a hard surface or with pliers. Try not to bang the ferrule out of the gun. Discard the ferrule and remove it from your immediate working area as it will be very hot. Take a one and a half pound hammer and knock the remaining shank from the pin or tap the unthreaded base of the threaded pin to test the connection. Wire brush and inspect. Threaded pins should have an even spread of solder material around their base. Direct pins should also have an even solder pool within the lug and around the lug base. Excess on either side would suggest that the gun was being held at the wrong angle during brazing. The remaining section of the pin after the shank is removed should not protrude from the surface of the lug by more than two millimeters. If the whole connection fails or is inadequate, then do not attempt to reattach a connection in exactly the same location as excess damage may be caused to the substrate material. For further information, contact your local supplier.